If you're looking to take math notes in Notion using inline maths, maths blocks, or just using the inline math block to actually bring some color to your Notion space, then stick around and I'll tell you how. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. To start with, you could use a math block by using the slash command, typing in math, and then it comes up with a math block. Alternatively, you could put equations in line, which is a recent update. So when you put in a text block and go into that text editor, it brings up that math in line equation. Another way, and probably my preferred way, is using the shortcut Control Shift E, which brings up that math block equation for you to add things in. When you see the dialog box, it works exactly the same as normal text. You can type in capitals, lowercase, all of the different symbols, and it will just give an output in an equation format. If you're only using the math block, it will only let you put the equation in. However, if you're using inline maths in a text block, you can then write your equation, put text after it, and then write another equation if you need to. If you want to input any of the math symbols that you may have, you can either go into their library, which you can see from the learn more. But once you know all the shortcuts, it's a case of using the slash and then whatever the command is. For example, this is the sum command. And for this specific example, you'd probably want some subscript and some superscript. So you can use the underscore symbol and what that does is says anything in the next selection and I'm going to use wiggly brackets because I don't know what they're actually called. Um, but anything inside the, the wiggly bracket selection will be put as a subscript. And then for superscript you can use, I'm going to call it the hat symbol because I don't know what it's called. But essentially that just puts anything as a superscript that's in the area after it. So you can see I've now put the infinity sign in there. So we have the infinity sign as a superscript and the i equals one as a subscript. Because this is a text block, you can turn that into a heading, which increases the size. But what I think most people would find useful is actually using the display style function. So if you go into the formula box, you put in display style, it then shows the formula in a different way, which I think is much clearer to see. Now, if you want to put any sort of fraction in there, you can use the fraction command by using the slash and FRAC. And then essentially whatever is in the first area of those wiggly brackets is gonna be the numerator. Anything in the second area is the denominator, i.e. above and below that fraction line. You can still use all of the symbols as normal as if you were writing text. And essentially you can just keep going, adding in different symbols, more fractions, anything else that you need for the equation. As soon as the formula box recognizes the equation, it will give you an output. And you can see I've used that hi-hat again to say that P is to the power of negative S. Now after speaking to someone that knows maths much better than me, Tom, a fellow YouTuber, you can see a link to his channel down in the description below, but after speaking to Tom, he basically said that integrals and derivatives are very common for math student notes. So if you are going to take more of those styled notes, you can use the slash binom and essentially it puts everything that you need in the derivative in brackets. I apologize if I'm butchering some of the maths terms here, but I did like A level maths, so I haven't done maths in a while. So you can see the binom function works the same as the fraction function. Whatever is in that first set of wiggly brackets goes at the top and the second goes at the bottom. Then just like every other formula, you can add in another fraction. So you can actually put fractions inside of itself by just putting the second fraction function inside of that first fraction area. So you can see we've got one plus the second fraction and then we're closing that bracket out. So you can see we've got one plus and then the second fraction and you can see we've got two brackets after the B, the first bracket closing off the denominator to that second fraction and then the second bracket closing off the numerator to the first fraction. Now again, to me, that's a little bit unclear, so I'm just gonna turn that into a header to make it bigger. And again, for whatever reason, it does seem a little bit congested, so I'm just gonna use that display style function again, just to clear things up, that's out of my preference. Now, when you're typing in an equation, it really doesn't matter what order you put it in, as long as the function is working. So we can put a fraction in first, then we can put a symbol in. So if you do want integrations, you can put that slash INT, which gives you the integration. And then we're going to use the subset and the superset to put the two different limits in. And then again, because this is a formula, we can just write in normal text and everything else will carry on as if it's a text box. Now, in some cases, the brackets may not actually surround the whole formula or everything that you put in. So you might need to use the slash big command to make the brackets bigger so it does surround the whole formula. 
This big command worked for this specific example, but if you click on that learn more link, it will take you to Notion's page, which has the library of all the different commands you can put in. This is obviously really useful for anyone using maths or writing down maths equations or any sort of equations that require symbols. But we can also use the inline math block to manipulate some of the styles of our pages. For example, we can use that text command so instead of it showing that italic equation style, it shows in a typical text style. And then we can use that subscript or superscript to actually raise or lower any other words. Maybe they're small notes or just things that you want to take whenever you're writing your regular notes. Something else from a design standpoint is because it's a formula style input to text, you can actually use a color command and then just tell it what color you want to put in, blue, yellow, or any other default that's there. But you can also use any other color identification. So I'm just gonna put in the green color identification, 228822, and you can see the text has gone green. So if you have a specific brand color, you could brand essentially all of the writing or anything that you're looking for in your public pages. You can also add a color box behind it. So if you do want a brighter highlight of something, you could just use the slash color box command, put in the color you want, and instead of it being that light pastel color that is traditional in Notion, you could have a bright yellow background. And again, just for a little bit more customization, you could have a border to that. So you could have a yellow border, blue background, and then change the text to whatever you want. Note taking can take quite a while, but there are some markdowns that can speed up your workflow. So if that's something you're interested in, check this video out over here and I'll see you there.